Nursehead is the hit angel in the outfield who's hotter than Hades at the plate and driving Anaheim towards the top of the West. The eyes of Texas are upon you. David Segui leads Erstad in the batting race. And Pudge is still a terror to pitchers and base runners. The Rangers are seeing red. The Angels are seeing stars. A Wild West showdown is next on Baseball Thursday. The fans are still filing in to Edison International Field of Anaheim for Baseball Thursday. Tonight's matchup, it's game one of a four-game series between the Texas Rangers and the Anaheim Angels. And hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. We expect a good show tonight as the American League West champion Rangers take on the Anaheim Angels. And joining me tonight, making his Baseball Thursday debut, was supposed to be Rex Hudler, a 10-year Major League veteran. He was filling in for Kevin Kennedy, but as you can tell, he's not here right now. And frankly, we're all wondering where he is. Let's go! I gotta get to the game! Come on! It's killing me! Hello, sir. Can I help you? Yes, my name is Rex Hudler, and I'm filling in tonight on Baseball Thursday. Okay, I don't have your name on the media list, sir. Uh, could it be under something else? Well, my name's Rex Hudler. All I have is Kevin Kennedy for the Baseball Thursday. There's no well, one there. But no yes, one Kevin Kennedy, he's the guy that I'm stepping in for. You have any credentials? I'm late, and I've got to get there. But I can't have a chance there without credentials. They're in the trunk. I just really don't have time to get them. Can I I'm please? sorry, so I have to turn you around. There's no one here by that name. Hey, wait, stop! Stop! Golden intersection. He's coming right to you, okay? Excuse me, sir. You have to stop right here. I need to see some oh, credentials. Rex Hudler, I'm doing Baseball Thursday. Sir, I know nothing about a Baseball Thursday, and I know nothing about no Rex Hudler. You're not even on my list. As far as I know, it's supposed to be Kevin Kennedy coming through here. No Rex Hudler. Oh, I come on. It's, it's my debut. I've had a tough day today, and I, no, I really sir, can't. Sir, I understand what you're saying, but it's my job, and I know you have one to do, too, but I can't let you in. Oh, well, thanks anyway. Hey, 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 hey. I'm giving him seven more seconds because we got to play ball and we've got a good one with Ivan hey, Rodriguez geez. and Mo Vaughn. Where wow. have you been? You're not going to believe this is your debut the on baseball Thursday. Brutal. You know, I'm give it a rest. I don't want to hear the excuses. Wouldn't let me in. We've got my a couple of left-handers, Kenny Rogers and Ken oh, Merker. And check wrong. these guys out. You'll have a chance to see Ivan Rodriguez for the Texas Rangers and Rafael Palmero for the Angels. Slugger Troy Gloss and move on next on baseball thursday we welcome you back to edison international field of anaheim for baseball thursday's game between the texas rangers and the anaheim angels let's check out the rangers skipper johnny oates starting lineup he will leave things off with luis alisea batting second chad curtis and then MVP Ivan Rodriguez, Rafael Palmero, 46 in the all-time home run list with 371. He'll be followed by David Segui and Ruben Mateo, two guys who are hot right now, Royce Clayton, Mike Lamb, and Jason McDonald. And Rex Hudler, I know that you have been really studying today, so could you give us a scouting report on Ken Merker? Yes, I can, Steve, and he's a left-hander with four good pitches. He relies on changing the speed, he's got the fastball curve, slider and a change, and his slider is his out pitch. He tries to get the batters to chase that, especially right-handers. And he relies on changing speeds, and his, his last start, May 6th in Seattle, he went five innings and only gave up three hits. Not one run through 76 pitches in the ball game had made nothing but bullpen appearances prior to that. 21 and a third innings of work. And Merker will first base Luis Alisay, who's really been hitting the baseball, but my goodness, as in all of Texas, they've been scoring a lot of runs on the recent homestand. They hit 375. They lead the American League in batting at 301. And Alisay at 464 the last week. Luis takes upstairs, ball one. Luis is a switch batter who is 
more effective from the right side, Steve. He's got more pop. It means he can hit the ball in the alley and occasional home run power. And he lines that one past Troy Gloss into left field. Erstad will gobble it up and hold Alisea to a single. Defensively, you saw Darren Erstad in left field. The center fielder is Garrett Anderson. And in right field is Tim Salmon. Gloss, Gill, Kennedy, Vaughn around the diamond third to first. And Benji Molina, who has been outstanding behind home plate this year, he has thrown out eight of 19 would-be base stealers. There is Molina. He's a young catcher, but he's showed a lot of talent back there with his punch-like action as he's throwing that ball, Steve. He really does have a great arm and very good at blocking balls in the dirt. And here is the first pitch to Chad Curtis, part of the world champion New York Yankees last year. He hit two home runs in one game. A couple of rings. He also played with these Anaheim Angels. This is their 45th round draft choice back at the beginning of the 1990s. And he takes a strike from Kent Merker. It's nothing in two. Steve, what Kent Merker likes to do is go right after the hitters, especially early in the game. Most pitchers want to establish their fastball, and then when they get ahead, like he has on Chad Curtis, he might try to make him chase out of the zone and not pitch, not throw one over the plate. Merker brings it. It is upstairs. One and two. His out pitch is a slider. And there's Johnny Oates. Johnny Oates in his 33rd year in pro baseball. He went to Virginia Tech. And 54 years young. And he's part of the Texas Rangers outfit, Rex, that has won the West three of the last four years. I mean, he's had a very good pitching staff with his coach, Dick Bosman. But my goodness, they traded away a lot of talent when you trade away Juan Gonzalez, Mark McLemore, Lee Stevens, Todd Zeal, Tom Goodwin. A lot of runs scored, a lot of home runs. They're still managing to score some runs, though, Steve. And Johnny Oates. Chad Curtis pumps it back out of play, two and two. Johnny Oates is uh, one of the finest managers in the game today. And I know firsthand. I got to play for Johnny in, in the Yankee system in Double A in Nashville and Triple A in Columbus, Ohio. And he's a fine skipper. Dick Bosman just to his right. He's the pitching coach. They won a team record 95 games last year, winning the West by eight games over the Oakland A's. Now the 2-2 pitch. And it is just over the head of Merker, stepping on second for the first for the double play is Benji Gill. Well, you can't ask for him much easier than that. Yes, no. Kent Merker, he, he gets a lot of ground ball outs because his curveballs and sliders, those type of pitches, the hitters hit the top half of the ball. He's able to court some double plays easily. Well, Merker now must face one of the great bad ball hitters in the game. Yvonne Rodriguez, he was the MVP last year, hitting 332, and he's four points better this year at 336, even though he's been in a bit of a slump. Just three hits in his last 18 at-bats. Terminology for a guy like Pudge that swings at a lot of bad balls is he's a hacker. He likes to hack. But he has improved at every single offensive area of his game the last five years. They say Pudge did not go around, so the count goes to two balls and no strikes. But last year with 35 home runs, his stolen bases were up. But look at the RBIs, Rex. Yes, and that was very impressive, Steve. He's done a lot. He, he's a lot more fresh than he has been. He gets that one and drives it deep to left field. Erstad at the wall will leap. It's gone. one nothing Texas. That pitch there, Steve, he was off balance. And he, he hit that ball on his front leg. I'll tell you the kind of power that he has. Let's Let's check it out, the whole sequence, pitch by pitch. Slider down, and it comes with a little changeup outside. And he tried something down low, looked like a possible changeup. Erstead, trying to measure it at the wall, just can't get up over that. 
Now Rafael Palmero as Texas takes the early 1-0 lead. They have been a team on fire, and it really has not been Pudge and Palmero on this surge the past week. It has been everybody else from Alisea to Segui to Mateo to Mike Lamb to all the other guys in their lineup. They know they're, what they're going to get from Palmero and from Pudge. Paul Merrill, he likes that ball out over the plate. There's hardly a pitch he doesn't like either, but he's very disciplined. He likes to pull, and you can see Garrett Anderson, the center fielder, he's playing on uh, a couple steps to the right side. Infield, Benji Gill, he's pulled over there in the middle. Paul Merrill going to left field. Erstad should have it, about 10 from the warning track he does. But Pudge Rodriguez with his 12th home run this year in the top five in that department in the American League. And here's the blast. Number 12 and a one-nothing lead. A one-nothing lead over Anaheim on Yvonne Rodriguez's 12th home run this year. Here's a look at Mike Sosha's starting lineup. He will lead things off with the American League. Number two hitter Darren Erstad. He's behind David Segui batting second Adam Kennedy. Hitting third Mo Vaughn the four spot Tim Salmon batting fifth Garrett Anderson he'll be followed by Troy Gloss Edgar Clemente Benji Molina and Benji Gill and we talk with Texas skipper Johnny Oates on his starting pitcher left-hander 35 year old veteran Kenny Rogers he knows that uh, eventually he's going to get a matchup that he acceptable to him is in his favor and I think that's what pitching is all about picking the people you want to get out and not letting the ones you can't get out not hurt you. Uh, he's been able to change speeds. He's always been able to pitch right-handers in. And um, when his command is on, he can be as good as there is out there. Well, Steve, Johnny Oates is right on. And Kenny Rogers, he relies on fastballs, curveballs, sliders, and change-ups. And he invents pitches. He'll change speeds. He'll drop arm angles. He's a veteran left-hander who knows how to win. And he came up in this Texas organization, then bounced around, but he comes in and down on Darren Erstad. Quality pitch to get a guy who has been number one or number two in batting all year long. Erstad, 25, won't turn 26 until June 4th this year. He is out of Jamestown, North Dakota. And Erstad takes low one and one. It's hard to sit on any particular pitch from Rogers because you just never know what's co coming. So what you do is you zone him. That's what you call looking in a certain area. It doesn't no matter what pitch he throws. Look for it and try to pound it. If you hit it back up the middle, he's an excellent fielder. Better watch out because he, he's, he's like a fifth infielder, Steve. He makes plays. He dives from the mound. I mean, he's, he really helps his own cause. As a matter of fact, in high school, he was a left-handed shortstop signed for only fifteen hundred dollars as a 39th round pick of the rangers back in 1982 18 years ago the one two to erstad he swings and sends it in the hole tuck play for clayton and gets by him in the left field and erstad with base hit number 58 this year the best and most in all of the major leagues now defensively for the texas rangers they have the speed in center field in Ruben Mateo. Jason McDonald can fly in right. Chad Curtis, motor in left. Lamb, Clayton, Alisea, Segui on the infield. And look at Rodriguez with eight straight gold gloves. Oh, you know, that will check anybody's running game. He, he's unbelievable. Last year, he threw out 50% of the runners. And Detroit Tigers manager last year, uh, Larry Paris, said he would have thrown out 90% of the runners. But the Rangers pitchers... A little bit slow to the plate. Well, Kenny Rogers starts out Adam Kennedy with a sweeper away testing the young rookie. We have a battle of two of the best rookies in the American League tonight in Kennedy, who is just 24 from Riverside, California, and Ruben Mateo, who is the center fielder for Texas. They are one or two in just about every single offensive category for first-year players. And there's a strike. One and one talking before the game to Angels manager Mike Sosha. They know how well Pudge throws, and the Angels are doing very well in the stolen base department this year. And I said, hey, Mike, will that affect your running game? And he said, it certainly will, combined with the fact that Kenny Rogers holds runners very well. He's got a good move to first base, and he'll mix in a slide step occasionally. That shortens the time. Yeah, Mike had a chance to uh, be in the Texas organization for one year at the end of his career 1994 with Pudge and he said we talked a lot about catching but so said 
I never thought I would ever see anyone with an arm like Steve Yeager of the Dodgers. And he said, and then I saw Pudge. And he is equal to Steve Yeager. Now, well, Sosha did go on to say, of all-time greatest catchers, he still said Johnny Bench, probably number one, but Yvonne Rodriguez is moving right up with him. Nice compliment. Rodriguez has plenty of gold gloves. Eight of them. On his mantle. He'll throw behind runners over there. Erstead knows that. Erstead jumping back. I mean, you've got a pitcher who controls the base runners, and you also have a catcher who's unbelievable. This might be one of those games where you sit back and wait for the long ball. Yes, the, the runners, if they go, will have to pick their spots. Now, to Erstead's advantage, Rodgers has thrown over three times already, and he's shown him three different moves. So Erstead's able to get an early gauge. Erstead was dancing around and really it looked like he was just trying to get into Rogers head it did not look like he was going to make that move towards second base we saw a similar situation last week with the Angels in Seattle John Halama has a great move for the Mariners Kennedy was on first base and he was dancing around with no intention of going Kennedy swings looks into the air left field racing back Chad Curtis and Chad will make the catch Erstad was running on that pitch, Steve. That might have been a hit and run, or it could have been just a straight steal. Now he's had some time to gauge Kenny Rogers' move. Now he feels comfortable. Let's see if he gets a good jump. I didn't get a great jump. That tells me that it was a hit and run. You don't want to get picked off at first base if the hit and run signs on. So you could tell he waited, and he also looked back to the hitter. Now he's peeking a little bit at Pudge Rodriguez. Runner, good base stealers will peek over there, see if they can see anything the catcher's going to give them. Mo Vaughn sends a base hit to right field. Erstad turns second. He will go to third. Here's the throw by McDonald. It is not in time. And Anaheim has runners on the corners with just one out. Mo's very aggressive early in the count. He likes to hit the first ball he sees usually, Steve. And He's all over this Kenny Rogers pitch. Watch Erstad. He's a exciting base runner. Catches the inside part of the base, which is proper. McDonald's throw. Should have just put that in his pocket. There was no chance. So now the Angels have first and third, Steve, with Tim Salmon up with an opportunity to get tie this, this game up. Texas with a 1-0 lead on Rodriguez's home run. Salmon has gotten hot after a very rough April. Fouls it back. Salmon got up to only a 163 start, although he's hitting 311 the last three weeks to raise the average to 252. But Rex, this has been this man's story his entire career. Slow in April. Numbers is all you have on a player. And when you go on their past records, you know if the player is healthy like Timmy is this year, he's going to put up the numbers eventually. Baseball is such a long season, 162 games. Salmon takes outside one ball and one strike. Here we go right here. You can see first 14 games. Wow, 163. And then the last 20 games, he's heating up. And look at the six home runs and 16 RBIs. He is getting after it. And even more dramatic, the first pitch he saw this year, he hit for a home run. That is foul. One and two. So in this situation, what Tim Salmon's looking to do, Steve, is to get the back underside of the baseball with the bat, get it elevated, hit in a sacrifice fly or a clean base hit. Now what Kenny Rogers wants to do, keep the ball down, hoping Salmon hits the top half of the ball, and they can turn a double play and get out of the inning. You see Clayton and Alisea with the way they are positioning themselves. Both have very good range. Salmon again. Sends it foul right side. It stays one ball and two strikes. Rogers not really a strikeout pitcher. He can get one when he needs one, but when he came up, he had a fastball that was clocked near 94 miles an hour. Not anymore. It doesn't even top out at 88, 89. If he pumps it up to 90, that will be on rare occasions. Well, he can pitch, and that's the key. It's not how hard you throw it. You can see he's given Tim Salmons a, a wide variety of pitches. What Johnny Oates said in the opening, though, is he likes to come inside. So the hitter in the back of his mind likes to, has to look inside a little bit 
but Rogers has to make sure he gets it in off the plate and doesn't make a mistake out over. A good hitter like Tim Salmon will feast on a ball like that. Well, he's backed off the last three. He went 85, 83 miles an hour. That last pitch was only 70. So he might go fastball. Looks like he will come fastball in on Salmon. And Salmon pops it up. Royce Clayton makes the catch. Two outs. Pitch tracks will show you the sequence of pitches here on Tim Salmon. 86 in, 82 away, 81 out, 84 inside, 71 down low, and 80 60 got him to pop up on. This pitch looks good to a hitter. The ball up and in, and it was well placed by Rogers. The runner won't be able to tag an advance home on that because he just wasn't deep enough. So Kenny Rogers almost out of a jam had. Erstad at third base. Excellent speed with just one out, but two gone now, and Garrett Anderson at the plate. Left-handers like to throw a lot of curveballs to Garrett. That's the scouting report on Anderson. They show him the big hooks early, and then they try to get him away with fastball. Now, Garrett's strengths are fastballs up and out over the plate. Sends it to second base. The Angels trip, but do not score. And Texas will send up the number one hitter in the American League, David Seguin, when we come back. The hits are even, but the Rangers have a long ball from Yvonne Rodriguez and a 1-0 lead. Now Ken Merker goes against the number one hitter in the American League. And... David Segui came in with a 387 average, and the guy he is neck and neck with in the race, Darren Erstad, got a base hit his first time up. Segui with a 13-game hit streak. These next two game, two guys, Segui and Mateo, have hit streaks that are 13 and 14. Well, Erstad, with the one hit, has gone in front of Segui by two points. On Jorge Posada in New York, the catcher, finally got the everyday job. He's just taking it and running with it. David Segui, Steve, he likes the fastball out over the plate, but he has some weaknesses from the left-hander. That's curveballs and sliders down low in the zone. Merker sends went right down the middle on 3-0. and oh. This guy has a long been an outstanding first baseman defensively, and he's been a good hitter. He doesn't have corner power, you'd say, and he gets ball four there. Baseball Thursday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. By Nissan, driven. By Toyota, Toyota making it happen every day. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler with you at Edison International Field. We'd like to welcome those viewers from Fox Sports Florida. Now joining us, it is the Texas Rangers and the Anaheim Angels. Ruben Mateo, who's been one of the bright young rookies in big league baseball this year, will lead things off. And he gets an off-speed pitch from Kent Merker for strike one. Yes, and Mateo has been a bright spot for the Rangers. Now, they let Tom Goodwin go to free agency to Colorado it's because they knew they had Mateo, a guy who could run the ball down in the outfield and hit for some power. He fouls it off, and he's quickly behind. No balls and two strikes. Well, he has a 14-game hit streak, the longest in baseball this year, and he's hitting 431 over that time. And I know Johnny Oates was telling you that this kid is really growing up nicely in the year 2000. That's why they were able to let Goodwin go. Merker comes inside, one and two. He's a young hitter like most young hitters. They're kind of free swingers. They haven't exactly found their... Their pitches of which ones they can pound and which ones they take for a strike. So with two strikes, he'll try to be defensive up there and just put the ball in play where it's pitched. Mateo had one that came inside on him, fouls it straight back. Merker's out pitch is a slider down. There's skipper Johnny Oates.
Merker, a veteran. He has been through the wars, now 32 years old. Dublin, Ohio, but he's been in a lot of postseason games as well. And there is strike three on the outside corner. A beautiful pitch thrown by Kent Merker. His first strikeout tonight. It's now time for a Fox Sports Net game break. The Devil Rays and the Yankees. No score. Top of the seventh inning. And Fred McGriff hits a solo home run to right field. And it is off Orlando El Duque Hernandez. Tampa wins the game 1-0. Steve Traxel, who shut out Boston and shut out Pedro Martinez last week, combines with Albi Lopez on a three-hit shutout. Well, there's a look at the American League East as New York now with a record of 22 and 10. They have a three-game lead on Boston. Tampa Bay playing much better of late. They're 10 and a half games back. Boston right in there, three games behind the New York Yankees. Meantime, a meeting on the mound. And I'm not sure if it's about Kent Merker's health, but the Angels have lost so many pitchers of late. Tim Belcher on the disabled list from the beginning. Ken Hill threw a pitch and tore an intercostal muscle in his rib cage and might be gone for two or three months. And Jason Dixon with a hip injury. Here's the last pitch by Merker. Well, let's see if we can see anything here. It's a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Uh, I can't really tell. Uh-oh. Here is a little body language. Baseball is a body language game. There's no verbal dialogue out there, so you kind of watch players, and they can tell you what's wrong with them by watching. Rick Smith, the trainer for the Angels, came out along with Mike Sosha, and I guess everything's okay. Well, I'm surprised he did not even ask to throw a pitch. He comes here and throws a fastball, and it is fouled off. This is Royce Clayton. As the Angels have had a, a few injuries now, but you can see Clayton versus the Angels, 357. It's hard to explain why a hitter does so well against one team, and that hitter can't even, he can't tell you why. Well, it might be just the fact that he enjoys coming home. Clayton fouls it off. He grew up in Los Angeles, went to St. Bernard's High School, and was the San Francisco Giants' first-round pick in back in 1988. Went to St. Louis, now with Texas. Merker's working ahead, 0-2. That's what pitchers would like to do. Because then they try to toy with the hitters, get him to swing out of the zone. With one out here, he'd like to try to get Clayton to hit into a double play. The Angels have turned one double play already in this game, Luis Alisea. And Merker still... I mean, he is twisting and turning and stretching. Yeah, it, he, he's feeling some pain, Rex. Yeah, that's not good body language, especially for Mike Sosha. He's had. There's Bud Black, the pitching coach. He may have to pitch. Pull himself out of retirement the way the pitchers are going down for the Angels. That has been their story through the years. This is a club that has been plagued by so many injuries. The last four, five, six seasons. The 0-2 pitch comes inside, just missing. One ball and two strikes. Well, there's something there's something wrong with him. And he's a veteran pitcher, Steve, and he knows that if you try to hide an injury as a pitcher, sometimes that ends up being a lot worse. But he, he kind of knows maybe it's something he can he feels like he can pitch through, but he's a concerned manager. Yeah, he, he's in a lot yeah. of pain, and they're going to have to get him out of here because Merker, it is in his neck, apparently, that is bothering him. So Mike Sosha comes out for the second time in this inning. Again, earlier this week, Ken Hill tore a muscle in his right side. Tim Belcher was shut down, going through a dead arm stage on his rehab, and Jason Dixon, they hope to see him come off the disabled list on Sunday. Well, like I said, body language is big. You can see it. You can tell it's in his neck or in his upper upper back. You can tell it's it's just a knifing pain. It could be some kind of pinch nerve or they're going to take him off. So a ball club that has already been hit by injuries to the pitching staff, not only this season, but the last five seasons will watch another pitcher lead towards the clubhouse with an injury going with trainer Rick Smith. Now Mike Social talked to Bud Black and they're saying, man, who are we going to go to? 
Well, Mike Fury was just called up from the minor leagues, and Fury replaced Ken Hill. They also have Derek Turnbow, a youngster from Philadelphia. They got in the Rule 5 draft, so the Angels will have a pitcher come out, and that pitcher will be given as much time as he needs to warm up. But Texas, with a 1-0 lead on Ivan Rodriguez, his 12th home run this year. It looks like Al Levine will start to warm up. Second here at Edison International Field of Anaheim, with Texas leading the Angels 1-0. You will not be, find a tougher competitor in baseball than Angels left-handed starting pitcher Kent Merker. Mike Sosha knows that, but he saw him get hurt early throwing a pitch to home plate, and Merker talked Sosha into continuing in this game. Let's take a look at the first pitch he threw where we saw the injury. Well, you can tell, first of all, it's not a leg problem or an arm problem. He's throwing the ball well, but he, he bends his, might have been something in his neck. Here, here we'll check it, the other pitch out, and this is the one he just can't go anymore. This was the last he threw, and then went down to one knee. Sosha came running out, and Ken Merker, here's the final pitch he threw of this ball game, Rex. Yes, and he grabs his neck. So it's something wrong. Something wrong up there in the back of his neck, and that's unfortunate. And Al Levine will be given as much time as he needs to warm up. So while we have the time, we've got time for a Fox Sports Net game break. Talk about the Atlanta Braves game against the Florida Marlins where something really special happened. The Marlins win the game 5-4, but Atlanta had great defense. Bottom of the fifth inning, two on base. Mike Lowell grounds to Chipper Jones. He throws to second base, then to first base, a triple play, and the Marlins win 5-4. to four. Preston Wilson hit his sixth home run for the Marlins, and in the National League East, Atlanta, they won 15 straight games, and they have a record of 22-12, and 12, a four-game lead on Montreal, Florida, and the New York Mets. But the way Mike Hampton threw the other day, I think that is encouraging for the Mets, who many consider were either going to be wild-card contenders or championship contenders in that East. Philadelphia yeah. eight and a half back. I mean, look at Florida this year. Florida's been the surprise of the league, no doubt about it. Montreal, Felipe Alou has that team raring to go, playing some good ball. Here is Al Levine out of Chicago, Illinois, and this has his, been his job a lot this year, and he's done a very good job helping out Mike Sosha to get to the later innings and Shigatoshi Hasegawa and Mark Petkaisic before Troy Percival. Well, Alabine will use a sinker slider. That sinker is really a fastball, and he holds it with two seams on top, and that gives it a little sink in action. Gives up a lot of ground balls. He's a two-pitch pitcher. He'll occasionally throw a curve, but it's mainly sinker slider. Well, here's our story. David Segui is at first base, and Royce Clayton is at the plate. There's one out. Ruben Mateo struck out, looking on a Kent Merker pitch. Clayton has fouled it back, and his count is two balls and two strikes. So a tough job for Al Levine to come in, not only throw strikes, but to get a very aggressive hitter out who has been hot. And he reaches for one. Mo Vaughn will take it. Benji Gill back to first, not in time, as Clayton is quick. He runs well, but Mo Vaughn got the important run. Important out. That was the lead runner. We'll check it out. Mo, good feeling position. Takes it, turns, fires to Benji Gill. Gill comes up with it, but Clayton, a speedster, is able to beat that out easy. And there's Bucky Dent, first base coach for the Texas Rangers. And he was the bench coach, but one of the great coaches in the game and a terrific guy. Ed Napoleon retired the other day to be at home with his family. Here's Mike Lamb kid from Cal State Fullerton. Grew up, went to Bishop Amat High School here in Southern California. And like all of the Rangers outside, the two best ones, Ivan Rodriguez and Rafael Palmero, he's been hot. Seven hits in his last 13 at-bats. The runner goes to first, second base. A beauty by Benji Molina catches David Segui. So, Molina now nine for 20 and would be base stealers this year. And he gets rid of it quickly. 
Put the tag on the oh! Texas comes to town. Everybody talks about Ivan Rodriguez, but the Angels have a pretty good defensive catcher in Benji Molina. Oh, that was just right on the money with a little bit of ridden troll. I call that get rid of it with some petrol on it. And look at Benji Gill. Puts that ball right out in front of the base. It's perfect. He had Clayton by two feet. So now the bottom of the second inning for the Anaheim Angels, and Troy Gloss comes to the page. And there, there is strike one. Rogers has had a lot of success against the Angels in his past 11 wins more than against any other team. And there is that big humpback curveball strike two. He, he takes a lot off of that, 69 miles an hour. I mean, he's, he's past the pride factor of having to throw every pitch 90 plus. He's become a pitcher, Steve, and a good one. Another curveball, this time fouled off. Good pitchers hit the spots, change the speeds. In and out, up and down. And now he doubles up on Gloss. He throws two, two curveballs in a row to Gloss. Now he's rubbing up a new one. And who knows, as a hitter now with two strikes, you don't know what's coming, really. Fastball, slider, change, curve. I mean, a lot of pitchers on 0-2 will go up and in hard. But he came with that curveball. And this time, he has Gloss reaching for it at 84 miles an hour. So even though he added 15 miles an hour, it's still just 84 with some sink right that ball was well placed on the bottom outside part of the plate Pudge Rodriguez he watches the hitter he's wanting to call for the same pitch a little change up down low but you notice how when he missed he missed way outside he wasn't going to give gloss anything out over the middle smart pitchers rarely make mistakes and when they do good major league hitters usually capitalize he wants a fastball in here Misses two balls and two strikes. Gloss does have a good eye with 25 walks this year. And for a guy who's only 23, that is rare for a young player to lead his club in base on balls. We've had a chance to watch Gloss a lot, and he's got a lot of power. He's a young kid. And he smacks that to left field. So after being behind nothing and two, he hooks a shot between the shortstop and third baseman. Hey, are you looking to put your sports knowledge to the test? Then be sure to tune into Sports Geniuses, the new nightly game show that'll challenge the most knowledgeable of sports fans. Sports Geniuses, weeknights at 6 and 11 on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. Well, I need to watch that program, Steve. You know how much I need to improve on my baseball trivia. Well, Matt Vaskersian does a great job. He is the host of Sports Geniuses, and they have some guys from around the country who come in and they have answers to everything. Here is Edgar Clemente, and he skies one to the right, but it is beyond the reach of Jason McDonald, so it's strike one to Edgar. Now the hands of a power hitter move on. What a game he had earlier this week against the Oakland Athletics as the Angels came from five runs down to beat Oakland by one. Vaughn hit a solo home run as part of the comeback and a three-run blast to tie it at eight where the Angels won it late. But here's a young man the Angels picked up at the end of spring training, trading Norm Hutchins and Jason Dewey to Colorado. Curveball just misses. Mike Soch has been using him mainly as his fourth outfielder and designated hitter against left-handed pitchers. Scott Spezio has been getting most of the designated hitting duties hitting from the left side of the plate. It's tough for a young hitter to play part-time, Steve. That's low. The reason it is is because they haven't quite established themselves as major leaguers. They don't know all the pitchers, so it's a very difficult role. But Edgar is a fine student of the game. He studies. He works hard out in batting practice all the time. He's got potential. Good throwing arm, good speed, nice power. for a base hit. Gloss goes to second. Clemente to first base. Nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. We'll see Kenny Rogers, the last two hitters, has just kind of left the ball out over the plate. And you can see Pudge is sitting up there and that ball's up. And when it's elevated like that, the hitter has a better chance of putting it in play hard. 
He found a hole. Now with the catcher, Benji Molina, coming up. Pudge Rodriguez goes out to the mound and talks to Rodgers about the possibilities. You know, it's interesting because in winter baseball, these two guys used to play against each other, Pudge Rodriguez and Benji Molina, but I guess Texas isn't allowing Yvonne to play winter baseball anymore. That's helped keep him, his legs a lot more fresh, Steve. Do you, see, do you see a bunt coming on here? Yes, this is a sacrifice situation. Benji Molina there at the bottom of the Angels order. These are the guys who were able to move the bats, control the bats, and try to manufacture a run. Molina bunts first base side and a beauty. Rogers only play to get Molina. Gloss goes to third. Second base, Clemente. Benji Molina with a nice job. And in sync will show you right here the runners. Benji Molina. The runners got to make sure the ball gets down on the ground before they take off running. Once they see it on the ground, then they got to go. And the object of the sacrifice bunt is to move the runners up to second and third in the hitting position. Third baseman in, Mike Lamb. Pushes it to first. Rogers, an excellent fielding pitcher, takes care of it himself. So Molina gets the sacrifice down beautifully. The Angels have two in scoring position. And now with Gary DeSarcina on the disabled list, Benji Gill is the number nine hitter and the shortstop. And what is his responsibility? Now, the infield's back. Johnny Oates' defense is playing him back. So what he wants to do is try to drive the ball through the middle of the diamond. That's the biggest hole out there, Steve, is right past the pitcher. Or get the back underside of the ball and knock that sacrifice fly in. Gill flips it foul out of play. It's one ball and one strike. The last time the Angels had this situation, first inning, runners first and third, and one out. Tim Salmon was jammed inside after fouling outside pitch and outside pitch off to the right side. Rogers jammed him with a fastball, and he popped it up to shortstop Royce Clayton. All he has to do is just hit the, hit the ball up the middle. And it doesn't matter if it's an out, but one of the runs will score. Gill takes high. It's early in the game, Steve, and Johnny Oates is willing to concede a run over there. Late in the game, if it was still one to nothing, Johnny Oates would bring his infielders in and cut the run down at the plate. He's but, trying to wait, stay away from the big inning. Right, right now he's keeping his middle infielders back, and that gives them more range so they can knock a ball down and try to keep Edgar Clemente from scoring at second. Gill taps it towards third, and it's foul. The count evens at two and two. And you know, Troy Gloss at 6'5", 230 pounds, you might say, wow, it's going to take a deep fly ball to send him home. Well, he's a tremendous athlete. He runs very well for a big third baseman. Gloss single to start the inning. Clemente single to left. Molina with the sacrifice, advancing the runners to second and third. Now the 2-2 count with Kenny Rogers against Benji Gill. At this time, we want to welcome our viewers from HTS, where the Boston Red Sox have defeated the Baltimore Orioles by a score of 11 to 4. I'm Steve Fiziak, along with Rex Hudler here at Edison International Field of Anaheim for Baseball Thursday. It is a 1-0 ball game. Texas has the lead on Yvonne Rodriguez, his 12th home run. Meantime, Kenny Rogers in a duel with Benji Gill. Runners are on second and third for the Angels with one out. And here is the 3-2 pitch. Curveball, tap foul. Well, he didn't give in. Nope. Veteran pitcher like Kenny Rogers, he's not going to give in. That's why they call him the gambler. Two pitches ago. Let's check this out here. Home plate umpire Jerry Mills, it might have fooled him. Nice little, they call that a yellow hammer. A, a ball that really breaks down. Loss at third. And a swing and a miss and a strikeout on a 69-mile-an-hour curveball thrown by Kenny Rogers. What a tough pitch. And it's a tough pitch to lay off of. Three and two. You're wanting to knock the runs in. And this is the perfect pitch. Big curveball, looks good to hit, bottom drops out. Credit Kenny Rogers for pitching tough in the gym. And that's what Johnny Oates talked about earlier. A pro professional pitcher like Rogers, when he gets in trouble, will make the pitch. And he has to Tim Salmon now, to Benji Gill in the second. 
Hammonds came in the first. Now Darren Erst had 58 hits this year, and he's taken the batting lead over David Segui by two points. 389 for Erstad, 387 for David Segui. Ball one. Well, Erstad has always been strong with men on base with the exception of last year. He only hit 253 overall last year, 250 with men on base. 97, unbelievable. 98, really strong. This year, back up at 391. Kenny Rogers knows that. He's going to throw him a bunch of off-speed pitches and curveballs. That's two curves in a row, and he's pitching them just like he did Benji Gill, down and out of the zone. Doesn't want to hang anything, and that's what you call a mistake breaking pitch. It's a hanger. Nurstead, he has some power. He'll, he'll take you deep. He's got five home runs this year. And he has two of those in the last two games. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. You notice where the location of that fastball was. Right on the outside part of the plate. A tough pitch to hit after you've seen two big curveballs. First hand tightens those gloves. Texas came in with a record of 15 and 18. Three games behind the lead in the West. The Angels at 17 and 18. Two games behind Seattle. Herstead takes low. It's three and one. Herstead has not walked in more than a week with 17 walks this year. Adam Kennedy, the rookie, will be next. And maybe Kenny Rogers is saying, I'd rather deal with the youngster than with Herstead. He'll try to make the Herstead swing and a bad pitch out of the zone if that's the case. The first base is open. And if he, if he unintentionally, intentionally walks Herstead, then that'll make an easy out at any of the base. With 3-1. Erstad swings and lifts it in the air. Right field, Jason McDonald will make the catch. And the Angels lead two. They've left four in the first two innings. And Texas holds on to a 1-0 lead. Erstad a little steamed with himself as he was beaten on the breaking ball. Welcome back to Baseball Thursday at Edison International Field of Anaheim, where the Angels trail the Texas Rangers 1-0 on Yvonne Rodriguez, his 12th home run this year. Steve Fiziak with Rex Hudler. It is a beautiful evening, rather cool evening. Started at 66 degrees here in Southern California. And we started with a matchup between Ken Merker and Kenny Rogers. But Merker threw 30 pitches, and somewhere around 24-25, he must have pulled a nestle neck muscle and uh, about five more pitches later took himself out of the game gave up two hits one run that was the home run by Yvonne Rodriguez so here we'll see T Mike Lamb at the plate with a home run this year and six RBIs now Levine fly ball Darren Erstad and one out It's now time for a Fox Sports Net game break. The Kansas City Royals and the Cleveland Indians, bottom of the first inning, no score with the bases loaded. Manny Ramirez hits a grand slam home run to left off Chad Durbin, the 11th career slam for Manny. At that time, it was 12-0 in the sixth. And Manny Ramirez leads the Indians to a 16-0 victory. That is the final score now. 16-0 Cleveland over Kansas City. Here's Jason McDonald with one out in the third inning. Line delivers and misses outside two balls and no strikes. He's a good little player who came out of the Oakland Athletics Organization, played college football and baseball at the University of Houston. He's got good speed. He played center field for Oakland days last year. Likes the fastball. He's got a little pop, Steve. He's hit three home runs this year. He's worked out of to a 3-0 count. And those three home runs came in consecutive games. There's a strike. Three and one. He, he's a good base dealer. So he'll try to get on there with a walk. 
Takes a pitch. And hammers it foul. Now the count is full three and two. But McDonald, 28 years old. Went to school in Sacramento, California. Hit 209 last year with Oakland. I told you about his days. The University of Houston used to run that run and shoot offense. And he was a wing back and a kickoff returner. But even when you're a wing back or a slot back, you'll see the football coming your way a lot. McDonald takes ball four, and that is the second base on balls issued in this game by an angel pitcher. The first by Ken Merker, now the first by Al Levine. Well, the last word, that means Jim Rome chats it up with Chicago Cubs outfielder slamming Sammy Sosa tonight at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. Just check your local listing. My Jim man, Romy. Jungle karma. He's got it going on. How about Sammy Sosa, too? He's got some karma as he is having a great year. Died with 12 home runs this year for second most in the major leagues after Barry Bonds hit two last night. Both into the bay. Right field. New ballpark at San Francisco. There's only been three balls taking drink out there, and Bonds has hit them all. Yep. The runner goes. Benji Molina showing off that arm again. He is two for two in this game. Rangers are testing the arm of Molina, and Al Levine's done a nice job of helping him out. Coming set, getting the ball to him very quickly. Nice little high leg kick. Look at Molina. He just got a nice throw in style over the top and gets it there to Gill in plenty of time. Mm, Benji Gill dropped the gate on him there. That puts his knee down in front of the base. Keeps him from getting in there. So Molina actually with a better caught stealing percentage than the gold glover, Ivan Rodriguez. Rodriguez is 7 for 17 this year, and Benji Molina is now 10 for 21. Whenever you're the... Uh, excuse, excuse me, he is 12 for 23 this year. Whenever you're the opposing catcher playing against Pudge Rodriguez, you want to show your own little rock concert. You know, you want to go out there and show your skills. And Molina tonight so far has done that, nailing Royce Clayton. And then there, Jason McDonald. Easily. That ball pop foul. So Alisea is a switch batter. And he's hitting on the left side of the plate now. And he had one at bat earlier against Kent Merker from the right side. He's not as strong left-handed. He does have some power, but he's more of a line drive spray hitter from the left side. Al Levine is a sinker and slider. He's trying to get on the same page with Molina here. Steps off. Levine says, give me some more. Again, hammered at the plate and off Alisea's foot. Wow, that hurts. You know? You know, Steve, there might be some people out there that don't know what that feels like. You know, I think that, you know, if you want to know what that feels like, go out in your garage, get a hammer, and whack your foot with it. I think I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about what it feels like. It's pretty painful. Especially on the toes. Now, that hit his back leg. That hit off his back knee. And that's even worse. Fouling off your knee, your shin, all those things, little owies. Alisea, though, playing a lot because of the injury to Frank Catalanato. Catalanato went out on rehab assignment today, but Texas has been hit by a lot of injuries. Justin Thompson out for the season with a left shoulder. He was the principal in the Juan Gonzalez trade. And that ball flipped towards left field. Erskine will not reach it. And it is a two-out hit for Luis Alisea, who is now two for two. And he's hitting darn near 500 in his last eight games. Well, I talked to Johnny Oates for some time today, and you know, the trade with Juan Gonzalez and five players they gave him, or they got in return, he told me today, they should just call the trade off, Rex. Call the trade off, give us Juan back, we'll give all the players that we got from the Detroit Tigers back, because it just hasn't worked out. Juan's not happy in Detroit. There's a shot up the middle. Benji Gill has it. Kennedy will step on second base to get the force. We'll talk more about that big trade with Detroit and Texas when we come back. Kennedy, Pong, Salmon up for Anaheim. 
made a trade back in November. The Detroit Tigers and Francisco Cordero, Gabe Kapler, Justin Thompson, and Alan Webb, infielder Frank Catalanato, and Bill Hasselman in a deal for Juan Gonzalez, Danny Patterson, and Greg Zahn. Thompson is out for the season with a torn rotator cuff. Gabe Kapler has a hip flexor. Catalanato pulled groin muscle, although he's rehabbing now. But the three principals all on the DL. Yes, but there was one bright spot, Francisco Cordero. He's a young pitcher, relief pitcher for the Texas Rangers now, but they're set, possibly becoming the next setup man behind John Wetland. And maybe the closer when Wetland does retire. So, it, I mean, it was funny talking to Johnny, and he just said, call the trade off. Some trades don't work out, some do. Well, this is one that has worked out, certainly for the Anaheim Angels and the St. Louis Cardinals. Adam Kennedy, the Angels desperately needed a second baseman and desperately needed starting pitcher. They got a rookie, Adam Kennedy, who has been very strong, very impressive in his first big league season. And he strokes that one to center field. Mateo will make the catch, and Kennedy is the first out. But Kennedy hitting 290 among the league leaders in hits. And Ken Bottenfield has been quality almost every single time out, won 18 games for the Cardinals. And Everyone knows what Jim Edmonds is doing in St. Louis, having a fantastic year with better than 400 average. So that's a situation where that trade worked out for both teams. And it worked vice versa for Johnny Oates. But Bottenfield now will step into the number one uh, rotation. Kenny Hill's out. And that trade looks even bigger, I think. We've got to credit Bill Stoneman for sitting and not just making a deal when he became the Angels general manager here. There was a lot of pressure on him to change some things here. He waited. The Seattle Mariners, the Texas Rangers, the Oakland, everybody in this division wanted Jim Edmonds. And he didn't, he didn't go ahead and trade. He waited for the perfect scenario, and all of a sudden he goes to the National League, trades Edmonds out of the league, which was a, a great move. Here's Mo Vaughn, and he fouls it off the right side. Vaughn with a single his first time up, but left stranded when Salmon popped up and Anderson grounded out. Injuries certainly were the angel story last year. Mo Vaughn, first play as a halo, fell down the opposing dugout, had a high ankle sprain, and really, Rex, he was never the same. Even though he had 30-plus home runs, 100-plus RBIs, Mo Vaughn will tell you, it was one of his poorest seasons since the early 90s. I mean, to, to hit, hit 30 and knock in over 100 on one and a half legs, that's not a bad season, Steve, but Vaughn wasn't happy with it. Now, that first play of the game of the season, the first inning, he tumbles down the steps. I mean, it was really unusual to see that. And that's why the Angels finished in last place last year. So many injuries. Strike. Now three and two. This is a guy who was a MVP in 95 and in 1998. Tremendous year, hitting 337 with 40. Dropped down to 281 and 33. And the club finished last in the West with 70 wins and 92 losses. Vaughn pops it up. Center field. Mateo comes racing on. And Rubin will make the catch just barely getting out of the way is Royce Clayton. They had a pull shift on for Mo, and Lamb's out there in the middle of center field. What's he doing out there, Steve? It's because of the pull situation. All right, curveball down, curveball in her half. Little sinker in, little, little curveball there. Another one. And there's one down the zone. So there's a third baseman, Mike Lamb, out in center field, and, and uh, Mateo's going. What are you doing out here? Most, most teams play that shift on him in the infield, though. Third baseman over and back a second base. Short stop over. Second. Three infielders in the right side. Now Jim Salmon, and he hits one to Royce Clayton. Back in their usual positions, and Clayton throws out Salmon. So Rogers through three, has been in two jams, but worked out of both beautifully. Here comes Pudge. Back in the first inning. It looked like he got fooled, Rex, but he adjusted. Yeah, pitch wasn't a bad located pitch. Down and over the plate. First had a game time, he thought, and just got over that wall. And Steve, baseball's a game of inches. And Rodriguez made it matter as he hit his 12th home run. 
And Texas has the one nothing lead. Pudge now fouls it off. Well, last year's average remarkable. You talk about a guy who plays in the Texas heat just about every single day. He hit 332, the highest average by an American League catcher since Bill Dickey back in 1937. Mm. He can do it all. He runs well, too. That ball popped up right side. Tim Salmon and Adam Kennedy. The Angels second baseman will take care of it. And now Levine really doing a nice job since taking over for the injured Ken Merker. You've just joined us. Kent Merker, Angel starter, went an inning and a third through 30 pitches, and somewhere around pitches 24 and 25, he strained a muscle. We are told in his neck. We're still awaiting the official report on the injury, and he left the game about four or five pitches later. Here's Rafael Palmero. You know, Pudge won most valuable player by his peers last year and by the Associated Press, but Rafael Palmero won the MVP according to Sporting News. And I say that because what an unbelievable year he had. He had 47 home runs last year, drove in 148. And he did it on a weak knee, remember. He is what they call a professional hitter, Steve. Tremendous skills. He'll go with the pitch wherever it's thrown. And look at that. Ground rule double. No, it does not. He's not touched by a fan. They had a wild play with fan interference. He is still limping because he still has injuries to his legs. Yes, and it's a hamstring now. It's always something when you're a player, Steve, and especially when you're over 30 or over 35. Look at him. He went with that pitch. This guy has tremendous power inside. But then outside, you try to throw him there, and he says, you know, I'll just go with you. And he's got a, a tight left hamstring now. I talked to him today. He said, you know, you're not going to see any kind of blazing action out there on my part as a runner. So you don't predict that he'll steal third base right here? Absolutely not. <laughs> Johnny Oates would probably have a fit. He'll have his right hand over his heart. Yes, wow. because he's, you know, you lose Juan Gonzalez, Todd Zeal. I mean, the last four years in a, in a row, Todd Zeal knocked in over 100 runs. You just can't replace a guy like that. Those three guys hit 87 home runs. Zeal, Stevens, Gonzalez. And yet this ball club continues to score runs in bunches. Here's David Segui. He's one reason they have rebounded so nicely. Stevens hit 24. Zeal hit 24. Gonzalez hit 39. They have to get those guys back who are injured like Kapler and Catalanato. And after the Rangers got swept by the Yankees three straight, I think they just said, wow, you know, we've got such a high payroll as it is. There's no way, Johnny told me this, they're not going to be able to re-sign Gonzalez anyway. They just kind of cleaned house, so to speak. Well, with the kind of money that they were talking about paying Juan Gonzalez, and it was near the 140 million mark, and then Ken Griffey Jr., who really is probably the best player in baseball, and he signs for considerably less, well, Junior does it both defensively and offensively, and Gonzalez really at this stage in his career is mainly an offensive player and a very good one. There's a snap toss, and it goes into center field, but Palmero staying put at second base. Palmero knows that he has to get a good secondary lead if he's going to score. So he was really bouncing off at the pitch. And this is another weapon, like Pudge Rodriguez, that Molina likes to show. He'll throw behind the runners. Now, this they might have had him if the ball was on line. The ball was off by about five or six feet. And you can see Palmero limping around out there. But he's trying to get a good secondary lead. And that's what the, they call, once, once the guy throws the ball, you get an extra lead. That's the secondary. Segui so thinking Levant. He got under it and lifts it in the air. Center field, Garrett Anderson, two outs. Well, Benji Molina certainly has shown off his arm. Great success in this game. Two for two in Woodley Bay Steelers. Yes, and it all depends on the pitcher. He's got to give you a good ball. That was up and out. And he was able to clear Molina out back there. Now, here we'll watch him again. Same pitch outside. He's able to clear his way from the hitter. And he got McDonald as well. Clayton and McDonald, both good base dealers. But like I said, the pitcher really helped him both times. Now Ruben Mateo. 
Howling it off right side. And this guy has long been the Texas Rangers' number one prospect in their organization. As you said, Goodwin going to Colorado opened up center field for Ruben. And he has not disappointed. You see that 328 average, but most of it has come in recent weeks with his 14-game hit streak. Broken back, ground ball, Benji Gill. Throws out Mateo, and the Rangers are done in the fourth. Troy Gloss will be coming up in the middle of Anderson and Edgar Clemente. The career at Edison International Field, a beautiful new ballpark that debuted, was renovated just a few seasons ago, and the Texas Rangers with the lead over the Anaheim Angels. American League West, one of the most competitive races in baseball. It is the closest, just three games separate first from last. And now Kenny Rogers goes against Garrett Anderson. There is ball one. He can really work that ball up and down, Steve, and hit both sides of the plate with a good change of speed. When he is on, he is really on. I mean, he threw a perfect game in his past back in 1994. And because he has so many weapons to choose from the control of four pitches, and you have control of all four, look out. I mean, he has just thrown two nasty pitches to Garrett Anderson. One ball, two strikes. Garrett will likely see that big, big curveball. Drop down sidearm a little bit. He'll do that occasionally with left-handed hitters at the plate. Just another look. That's right. Early in the game, I told the people, he will invent pitches out there. Take a lot off, you know, he's smart. And he might get a certain gauge on a guy and what he's doing, and he'll say, I'm going to throw him the same pitch, but I'm going to drop my arm angle and take a little bit off of it. And there it was again, he dropped down. Well, he is dealing tonight. But the best game he ever had was on July 28, 1994, and it came at home against the then California Angels. Kenny Rogers, the last man he would face, the Angels carry D. Sarcina, and he would send a fly ball to Rusty Greer in center field. Just the first, at that time, perfect game by a left-handed pitcher in hey. the American League's history. Well, I was in that game, and you know no. that I almost got a hit in that no. bottom of the ninth. I led the inning off, Steve. You I was in that game. You struck out in the game. You lined out in the game. I don't remember you doing anything well. Oh, don't kid yourself. I was in that ballpark, and it was electric there at Arlington Stadium. I'll never forget it. It was a packed house. I was taunting those fans leading off the inning that inning and saying, I'm going to get him. And what did the fans do with you? They ended up getting me. Well, let's check it out. Let's go back. Flashback to 1994. There is the Wonder Dog, Rex Hodler, to center field. Look at Rusty Greer. Oh, oh he man. saves the perfect game. That's crushing me again. It's biz. Oh, that would have been nice to be able to break that up. Now Troy Gloss sending it left center field. Curtis over. And he gives way to the center fielder, Ruben Mateo, for the second out. But I'll never forget that, Steve. It was fun. I mean, you know, you don't want to get no hit. You know, and you're a competitor. You're trying to beat the other guy. But coming out in the ninth and tenth, the Rangers fans were on their feet. And I stepped out of the on-deck circle, and I simply turned and looked at him, and I said, I'm going to get him. What did you say to Greer the next day around the batting cage? I said, you owe me. I set you up for your career catch. <laughs> You're just a young rookie, and I said, you're not going to make a, a more valuable catch than that. And it was. I mean, when you can save a perfect game, what a great memory. And that was just the beginning of Rusty Greer's terrific career. Here's Edgar Clemente, and he wraps one foul down the left field side. So he's behind, no balls and two strikes. Clemente has good power. Still looking, though, for his first home run with the Angels. Hit eight last year with Colorado. We get another 16 in the minor leagues at 24 total, so this kid has power. Inside corner, what a beautiful pitch. Rogers is dealing after being troubled early in jams in the first, in the second. He is on being here in the fourth. Fifth inning we go. The Texas Rangers have the lead over the Anaheim Angels on Pudge Rodriguez's first inning home run. And it's time to dine. I mean, this is the Diamond Club right below us behind home plate. And it is a wonderful area. And they have fantastic 
Parisian cuisine down below. Great ballpark. They have restaurants all over this facility. Beautiful place. They remodeled it years ago. Now Levine is able to knock it down and then underhand to move on at first base. For the first out of the fifth inning, Royce Clayton is gone. That center field area was completely enclosed with the old ballpark. And they broke it open. You can see the 57 freeway with the cars heading south. And during the daytime, you can see all the way to the mountains. Now, these are the local mountains right. in left center field. Boulder. And here's Mike Lamb, who grew up an Angels fan, went to nearby Cal State Fullerton, left-handed batter. Swings and sends it down the right field line into the corner. Salmon up with it quickly, and he will hold Lamb to two bases. So Lamb jumps on an offering early from Levine. Swats it past move on. Mike Lamb and Tom Evans are doing the platooning at third base this year, trying to replace Todd Field. There it is, inside pitch. He just went with it, turned right on it. Pass Mo. Tim Salmon will retrieve it off the wall. Lamb's fourth two base hit this year. He's at second base. Texas threatening to score more. Levine came in in the second inning with one out. Alisay a ground ball. That will get Lamb to third base. Alisay is out at first and two outs now. Hey, it's time to go deep. That means going deep in an investigative report. Going deep as has hazing crossed a dangerous line on campus. Sunday at 7 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings. And you know, for generations, young men and women seeking entry into an elite group, whether military, athletic, or social, have been required to pass through some kind of initiation rite. These rites have fallen into a category of activities called hazing. Going deep on Sunday. Uh -huh. Brings back some memories. Eric Weaver has jumped up in the Angels' bullpen. Well, I'm not for it. Well, you know, that's just the way it is, Steve. It was there way before we were born, and now it's the same way in professional sports. And as a major leaguer, we have a little type of hazing. What we do is we dress all the rookies up in dresses and make them walk around the ballpark. Now, that's totally different than some of the hazing that Chris Myers will be talking about this weekend on Going Deep. Mike Sosha out for a visit with Al Levine. And all of the infielders and catcher Benji Molina will join him. As they will now face Luis Alisea. And Alisea has really been a tough out. Two hits in this game. Batting average near 500 in his last eight. So Levine really doing a terrific job since coming on in the second. But he has done this a lot. A lot of two or three inning stints in the last week and a half. We'll be right back. Al Levine with really a terrific job in middle relief for facing the injured Kent Merker. He goes three and a third and gives up three hits, one walk. These are the stats that pitchers most in wants right there. The no runs and no earnings. And look at Merker. Wow, he went down. Something in his neck. It looks like he has a headache, a migraine. I'm not sure what it is. Well, every time he was throwing his pitch, he would grab his backside near his neck. And now the Angels will bring on Eric Weaver. And Weaver started in the minor leagues earlier this year, but purchased from AAA Edmonton on May 2nd, replacing Jason Dixon, who was placed in the disabled list. He's a big guy, Steve. Fastball, split finger mainly. While we have the time, Rex, it's now time for a Fox Sports Net game break. The Seattle Mariners were visiting the Oakland A's tonight. It's a 1-1 ball game, bottom of the fourth inning with two runners on, and Oakland's Ramon Hernandez doubles over center fielder Mike Cameron's head. Both runners will score. Oakland now leads 4-1 in the bottom of the fifth inning. Seattle with the lead in the American League West by a game and a half over Oakland. The Angels two back the Rangers three back. 
And here we have Eric Weaver at 6'5", 225 pounds, ready to deal with the Texas Rangers. Mike Lamb is at third base. Luis Salosea, two for two in this game, is at the plate. Ball one. I'm not really sure why Mike Sosha took out Al Levine. He was doing very well, and there's there two outs. All he needed was one more to get out of the inning. And not really sure why they took him out, but he brought in Weaver to try to get Luis Alisea. There's the split finger pitch. One ball, one strike. So Levine throwing 39 pitches, but we talked about Levine being used more and more recently with the injuries to Angel pitchers. When Ken Hill went down earlier this week, it was Levine to come out of the pen to keep things close, and he did just that. He was the winning pitcher in the 13-inning game with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays when he went three-plus innings and got the victory. Alisea says he did not touch the baseball. And the home plate umpire, Jerry Meal, said, yeah, it just tipped off your bat, so it's strike two. One ball, two strikes. Alisea reaches out and just punches it to center field. That will bring Mike Lamb home with the Texas Rangers' second run. Well, you talk about when you're hot, you are hot. Run charge to Alavine. Nice piece of hit by Luis Alisea. Just went with it. Split finger. Well, that was the first pitch of the fastball. Then there was a the split. High fastball, foul tip. Then it went with another split down low, and look at him. He just went with it, touched it, and that's all he needed, Steve, was just a lousy single to score that run. Now Chad Curtis. Grounded out twice to shortstop, Benji Gill. Weaver throws the fastball at 87. And Weaver does have a fastball upwards of 91, 92 miles an hour. Great athlete coming out of high school in Springfield, Illinois, where he was a quarterback on the football team and the top scorer in basketball in the entire state of Illinois. That ball is rope to left field for a base hit. So Weaver has been up in the strike zone. Alisea got one down. Curtis got one up and singles to left. You can't walk. Look at that ball up in the zone. That ball's way up here, and, and they just put a bullseye on it. You, they're they're going to hit that ball more often than not. And Chad Curtis, he's a big league hitter. He knows what to do with it. Just throws out a single. With two outs here, Mike Sosha pulled Al Levine. That brings in Eric Weaver. We're not exactly sure why, but Steve, that's, maybe that's why we don't manage. And Levine had thrown almost 40 pitches, and just two days ago, he had thrown almost 40 pitches. Well, that's why he wants to save Al Levine. And coming to the plate now, Yvonne Rodriguez, who has homered and popped up. Rodriguez lifts it in the air left field. This should be the final out of the inning. It is Erstad making the catch. But Texas scores one more. Levine doing a strong job. And Weaver pointing to himself saying, my fault. Steve Fiziot, Rex Hutler with you on a baseball Thursday night. Texas Rangers fans here at Edison International Field. But the young man has a halo cap on. So just split right down the line. Yeehaw. He's got that 10-gallon hat on. Kenny Rogers, who has been awfully sharp in the last two innings, was on the ropes in the first two innings, but the Angels could not come up with a clutch hit. Twice they had a man at third base with less than two outs, and twice the Angels could not get that run home. Benji Molina will lead it off, and he fouls it back one ball and one strike. A pitcher like Rogers is a lot harder to figure out, Steve, than a guy who just throws 95 miles an hour every pitch. You can eventually time that as a hitter. But when Rogers is changing speeds, arm angles, pitches, locations, that really baffles the hitters. And it takes them a while to figure it out. And Anaheim really a fastball hitting club. Molina sends it high in the air, left center field. Ruben Mateo, about 15 from the warning track, will make the catch. And that is the first out. And let's see now, that is. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row retired by Kenny Rogers. He's got it going on. The Angels are going to do anything. They're going to have to come through in the clutch. 
They had him second and third two times tonight. And he's having success in a rare spot. Here's Benji Gill. Nice spot. Rogers up, though, and quickly tosses to David Segui for the second out. Okay, next week on Baseball Thursday, a good one. Most of you will be seeing the St. Louis Cardinals against the Philadelphia Phillies, and that means Big Mac with 12 home runs this year. Others will see the Minnesota Twins and the Oakland A's. That is next Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Jason Giambi having a terrific year with 14 home runs this year. The Oakland A's came to town and took two of three from the Angels. He's right up there in the RBI department, too. 37. Top flight home run leaders, Giambi with 14, Barry Bonds with 14. You see the rest with 13, and then McGuire with 12. But Sosa hit his 13th today. Some people might think that baseball's wound like a top flight golf ball, but I'm going to tell you, Steve, these hitters are big and strong. They, I think that's the biggest difference. That's right. You train all year round. They are solid. You put a piece of wood in a guy's hand like that. Erstad, could this be three for three? Yes, three home runs in the last three games for Darren Erstad. Just got through talking about how strong these hitters are, and Erstad one of them. He's yelling to the curve and trying to fire these guys up, get a little momentum going. He's an intense ball player, Steve. He's sprinting around those bases. Look at that pitch. Right over the plate. Curveball. Erstad just got it enough to get up over that high wall. He's an igniter. He's a catalyst type player. And that's the first time in his career he has gone back to back to back three straight games with home runs. And he now has six this year. Here's Adam Kennedy. And Kennedy takes high ball one. So the lead has been cut in half. Texas with a home run by Rodriguez and a base hit by Luis Alisea. Now a home run by Erstad has made it 2-1. Kennedy with a ground ball. David Seguini will touch the bag. The inning is over, but the Angels get one. On Darren Erstad's sixth home run this year, he now has a couple of hits and has the American League batting race over David Seguini to himself. Sosha just made a pitching change. He brings in Hasegawa. He doesn't have many guys left already. Two pitchers have left because of injuries. Merker started through 30 pitches, then lifted himself with an injury we think is to his neck. Eric Weaver just limped off the field with trainer Ned Berger. But there were smiles in the dugout, which tell you that maybe there was no injury. Maybe they just wanted to get Hasegawa out there with enough time to warm up. And he's ready. Stranger things have happened, Steve, but seeing all the smiles, you know, I mean, look at Hasegawa, though. He's going to come in here, hits 32 to innings pitch, Steve. Ooh, that is a big question mark there because Hasegawa in the last few years has been a pinpoint accurate pitcher. He, he's got a fastball, slider, split finger, and a shoot, though. That's what the Japanese call a running fastball. Well, Hasegawa, you're right, what quality pitcher coming to the organization in 1997 from Oryx. Works over in the Japanese League where he was one of their top pitchers for years. But with Anaheim, a 3.57 career earned run average. And really he was a, under a hit per inning in his career until this season. Here is Rafael Palmero. He started Rafi out with a split finger that went away. A very nice pitch. And then he comes inside on him. You have to Really be careful when you're pitching to Palmero. Now he's going away with a fastball as Molina calls it away. Just misses low. Two balls and one strike. Ooh. How do you pitch this guy right now? Here's the hot zone. You don't. You try to hit these two spots right out of here, and that's hard to do. But Hasegawa so far is going for that 228 blue spot, the far bottom right. And there and it was. He throws that split finger pitch and a beauty two and two. Right on that spot. That's not easy to do. Hasegawa knows 
You get a hitter out like Palmero, beautiful split finger. You've got to hit your spots. He reached for that split finger again. No ball pass it. Hasegawa touches the bag, and there's the first out. Hey, let's go back to the Darren Erstad home run. It was a curveball, and he stayed on it so well. Oh, let's check it out. You could see, Steve, that ball was right in the middle of the plate, but what I like was his head position. Look at his eyes looking right down on that pitch, and he got the back underside and sent a souvenir up in the stands. Number six this year and a pair of hits for Erstad, and that is now 59 this season for the guy who has more hits than anybody in the major leagues. Kenny Rogers has been sharp, hung that curveball, but really it broke well and was down in the strike zone. Erstad just bent his knees, went down and got it. And David Segui, and there's a strike. Was that the Shuto that ran away? from Segui. Yes, and, and it's very effective against right-handed batters. It'll start on the middle part of the plate and then run in off the plate. He uses it away with left-handers as well. Segui takes low. David now 33 years old. He was born in Kansas City where his pop Diego was a pitcher for the Kansas City A's and later became the first pitcher to throw a game in Mariners history. back. Matter of fact, Diego Segui, his father, threw the first pitch in Seattle Pilot history and Seattle Mariner history. He was on both those ball clubs. David spent some time with the Seattle Mariners the last few seasons. Had some good years there. Yes, and before that, the Montreal Expos. Last year hit 298 with Seattle and Toronto. 14 home runs, 52 RBIs, but he broke a bone in his right hand taking a line drive off of his glove. That's low. It's just the second week of May, Steve, and some of these players are already having injury problems. They're already having muscle problems here and, and there, and, and I saw Sagi getting a little ice on his leg, and I said, man, does it ever stop? He says, man, that, that's what being a major league player is all about, enduring the tough times and the painful times. Which misses outside three and two, not by much. Mike Sosha wants to know where that last pitch was. Home plate umpire Jerry Meals says it was outside by a few inches. Pitch tracks will show you if it was correct. Pitch tracks by Questech.com. Now Hasegawa with a 3-2 to David Segui. Will he go fastball? No. He went that split finger again. Did not give in to David Segui, the hottest hitter right now in the American League. Well, you got to be careful. You can't just groove a fastball. You'll be having some more neck problems like Merker did by watching that ball snap over the fence. You've got to really be careful. To keep the ball down and away. That's where Molina's setting up. And he got him to chase the split again. So Hasegawa with the strikeout of David Segui, the second out of the sixth. Pitch by pitch. We'll see how he did it. Look at Benji Molina setting up away. Just hit the target nice down, low. Good pitch outside corner. They're not coming in on him at all. This is good pitching here. Another, another split finger. And then a split finger down and got him. Just one out of the zone. Made him chase. That's what they call going after a bad pitch. Wow. His son has a similar haircut, too. We saw him last year in Seattle. He's colorful. Now Ruben Mateo, the center fielder who has a 14-game hit streak on the line. Ruben Mateo just 21 in the Dominican Republic. Last year at Tulsa hit 336. And Texas 238. And that is barely foul. Well, these two teams, you're talking about injuries, the most banged-up teams in the American League West. Yes, Seattle has lost Fred Garcia and Jamie Moyer, but Texas has lost Justin Thompson for the year, Rusty Greer with an ankle hamstring, Frank Catalanato, Gabe Kapler. The Angels have lost their shortstop, Gary D. Sarcina, and pitchers Tim Belcher, Ken Hill, Jason Dixon, Ken Merker tonight. Ball jumps away from Benji Molina, and the count goes 
Hasegawa's way one and two. The Angels just sent down Ramon Ortiz, their number one prospect in the organization, called up Mike Fury. Also called up Jared Washburn. So they've got pitches going back and forth from the minor leagues to the DL to rehab. It's been a roller coaster ride. Yes, well. Catalanado, he's going out on a rehab assignment for the Rangers, and Justin Thompson is having major surgery. He's out. And it'll be about 10 more games before Rusty Greer is back playing. Good pitch by Hasegawa. Strikes out two in the sixth inning. The Angels will try and tie it or take the lead in the bottom of the sixth with Mo Vaughn coming to the plate. Angels right-hander Shigatoshi Hasegawa from Kobe, Japan, has to be pleased with his last inning of work. Yes, he, he was mixing them up well. Split finger down low, Molina tags him because the ball hit the ground. Another one to Mateo. He's putting that split finger right where he wants it now so far. Now Texas must face the two hottest angels against the Rangers. Kenny Rogers, though, against Mo Vaughn and Tim Salmon. Vaughn, in his career, 354 hitter against the Rangers with 21 home runs. Tim Salmon, he plays better against Texas than anybody. He's hit over 400, 407 with 21 in his career. He'll back second. And there's a strike. Nothing in two from Rogers to Vaughn, and he went fastball. And he's Vaughn's face. Rogers 44 times, got 13 hits and three home runs off him. All for a big curve. Wow, that was a sweeping one that really got away from him. Because he dropped down sidearm. That's a tough pitch control, and you can see it brings a smirk out of Rodgers. He's saying, well, see, I'm, I invented that pitch right there, and it just didn't go over like I wanted it to. Now the one-two. Again, he goes sidearm, trying to tease Vaughn to chase that pitch low and away, and the count is even two and two. And that, that pitch... That pitch coming at you like that as a left-handed batter, it, the first tendency you want to do is to pull that shoulder and to come off that ball. You got to stay in and go to left field. They stay away. It's now 3-2. and two. He had an 0-2 count. What is interesting, he's going for the strikeout because the defense is playing him to pull. I mean, the shortstop is over at second base. The third baseman is almost on top of second base. Look how many infielders on the right side I mean there is a gap 80 feet from the third base line to the third baseman Wow you know he could just tap one by that third base bag and might get three bags out of it well he waves at the off speed and strikes out he doesn't want any part of move on in that middle half inside we'll see it away fastball Sets up, another fastball away. Big wild sidearm curve away, away, curve, away. Thought that should have went, but that was just, he couldn't get it. Look at pitch tracks. Wow. They didn't want any part of Mo Vaughn on the middle part of the plate because that's Mo's strength. Why are they going to do that? They're trying to pitch it where they're not going to hit it. And pitch tracks from Questech.com. Well, that takes us to Tim Salmon, but it's interesting. Not one pitch was in the strike zone, according to QuestDeck.com, and everybody was playing him to pull. So it's almost like they're asking Mo Vaughn to just flip one into left field. That will take away what they don't want him to do is hit the ball into the seats. Tim Salmon spaced Rogers 51 times. Got 13 hits and four homers. That big bender that just barely misses away. Two and one. So when you've faced a guy 40, 50 times, you've got a pretty good idea about it. Salmon's 0 for 2 tonight. On the season, he's got eight home runs, and he got off to a very slow start. Who knows about Rodgers? Half foul. Count evens. Two balls and two strikes. And it's almost like Rodgers has every single angel reaching for the baseball. That pitch so tantalizing, he rarely has broken 87, 88 miles an hour in this game. But the last at 82 in the perfect location. Kenny has thrown 81 pitches in this ball game. His best game was his first game of the year against Chicago. Went eight innings, allowed one run. 
He is missing away three and two. He'll keep the ball away from the hitter's strength almost every time. And all the hitter can do is wait for the half-inch mistake. If he leaves it out over the plate, then the hitter can't miss it. He's got to hit it. It's the only thing he'll see all night. If he comes inside, he comes way off. Way inside. And that ball is shot up the middle by Tim Salmon. So the Angels have the tying run on with one out in the bottom of the sixth inning. And this was a mistake we're talking about. Didn't hurt him because he didn't hit a home run, but this ball was up out over the plate. Bud Rodriguez is sitting there, too. But look at that. That's outer half of the plate. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but good piece of hitting by Salmon. Ball was by Rogers. Boy, could catch it. But still, it was off the end of the bat, not the meat part. Right, it was outside. I thought it was over the middle of the plate, but it wasn't. Rogers knows. Salmon will say, that's about all I can get off of. Now Garrett Anderson, who had a couple of hits yesterday. And what's interesting about Anderson, he has six home runs this year, and you'd think he'd have more trouble against left-handers, but four of the six home runs have been against left-handers this year. He only hit three home runs off South Boss all last season. And guys are on base, different story. That's what you want. You want to have a nice batting average with men in. on base. They'll call you a, pl a clutch player. And Anderson, he just re-upped with the Angels for four more years. They know what kind of player he is. He hits 300 every year. And he takes the curveball and twists it down the right field side. Foul and out of play. Rogers is going... Anderson mostly big curveballs. I mean that last one 71 miles an hour. I mean you got to really really tell yourself to wait if you're a hitter. And that's hard to do because you want to hit. He'll throw fastballs in and away. You can see Rodriguez setting up away. Anderson hits it to Segui. They've got a chance for two. There is one and the double play. So Anderson grounds out 3-6-3, and Kenny Rogers has given up one run to the Angels in the last six innings. Segui, one of the smoothest defensive players in the American League. Two to one, Texas has the lead over the Anaheim Angels as we head to the seventh inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. He's got his rally cap on, hold it backwards. Dad's watching the game, but he's saying, how about another cotton candy? Hmm. Well, you know who he's for. He's got the jacket, he's got the cap. We just got a report on Ken Merker. He had severe migraine headaches. Wow. There is a line drive. Broken bat base hit to center field by Royce Clayton. Well, that might give Mike Sosha some resolve just in the fact that the injury was not a muscle pull. Watch the inside. He sawed him off that's what they call you and that the head of that bat went in the stands be careful that's a sharp optic it fell for a base hit and now the usher's trying to take it and let him have it that's a broken bat oh uh, you know what they probably think that it's a little too sharp to have in the stands now watch this here the head of the bat goes up in the stands watch out that is a lethal weapon but look at he saved somebody's life oh he, he snagged it. Here's Mike Lamb. And Lamb takes a strike. So what do you say when a bat breaks and drops for a base hit the baseball? That bat died a hero, Steve. Or a purple heart. I thought you were going to have me do my, my uh, chainsaw imitation. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. A 2-1 ball game. Texas with the lead over the Anaheim Angels. We've seen good defense and good relief pitching by the Angels. Outstanding starting pitching. And now a fly ball sent to right field by Lamb. Salmon will make the catch for the first down. The 
It's now time for a Fox Sports Net game break. Seattle and Oakland. 5-4. Seattle has a, the advantage in the bottom of the sixth inning after a three-run home run by Jay Buhner. Jason Giambi answers with a three-run shot to center off Arthur Lee Rhodes, a tough left-hander. His 15th home run that leads everyone in the major leagues. Oakland has a 7-5 lead. Giambi three for three with a single, triple, and a home run. Boy, Oakland is charging. They won their last two games over the Anaheim Angels, and they have a record at 500 at 17 and 17 now. This division looks like it's up for grabs. Now, Seattle does have two starting pitchers injured, Freddie Garcia and Jamie Moyer. And they come back, and Moyer could be coming back shortly. That will help our Garcia. Luke Pinella told us last week could be gone another three, four weeks. Pitching will end up being the difference. It always is. Because good pitching outdoes good hitting. That's where the Angels need their young pitchers to step up. They'll be sending young players like Jared Washburn and Jason Dixon this weekend. And Texas does have more veterans. I mean, they've got Kenny Rogers, Rick Pelling, Darren Oliver, Mark Clark, Esteban Loiza. Last year, Johnny Oates, when they won the West, had Helling with Aaron Seeley, who won 18 games, and Mike Morgan and John Burkett, Clark and Loiza. But Helling, well, he was just brilliant in his last game in his second in the American League run average race. Well, Hasegawa gets the strike against Jason McDonald and cuts him down. The third strikeout for Hasegawa. Hasegawa's been very effective with his fastball, using it as a setup pitch to his split finger. But look at this fastball. Just froze him on the outside corner. You see it again. Molina holds it there. They call that framing it up nice. So, Shigatoshi Hasegawa is working the plate. Split finger. He has it working nicely. And there's that running fastball that misses away. One ball and no. Here's Luis Alisea, the one guy that the Angels have not been able to get out in this game. Three for three, including an RBI single against Eric Weaver to give Texas a 2-0 lead. Run a big one now with a 2-1 score. Foul off. Luis hits the ball where it's pitched. Asagawa's going to have to figure a way to keep him from getting that fourth knock of the night. Alisea was with the Angels in 1997, hit 253. He's a veteran now, 34 years old, in his 10th big league season. Listen, we were teammates with the St. Louis Cardinals together. A couple of second basemen battling for the same spot. Well, he, he, he won that. He ran me out of town. You're still a fan favorite in St. Louis, though. Joe McEwing, though, did take some of your accolades last year. Super Joe. He's with the Mets now. I think he's in Triple A. Asagawa with the 2 1 pitch to Luis Alisea, and it is chopped to the second baseman, Adam Kennedy. Nice big hop for Asagawa with two shutout innings. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. 2 1, Texas. Let's take a look at what's coming your way tonight on the National Sports Report following our game. For that, we take you to the Fox Network Center. Here in Southern California, the weather is always nice. It's one of those casual come as you are. It doesn't matter whether you're sitting in the Diamond Club or you're just being carried by Dad. Short sleeves out, even though the temperature at game time is 66. It has dropped to 62 degrees right now, but she's enjoying the game. And we're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Troy Gloss, Edgar Clemente, and Benji Molina will face Kenny Rogers. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. About ready for bedtime. Look at those long eyes. Red hair, though. Believe that. Strike one from Kenny Rogers. That was Kenny's 87th pitch. He's thrown 57 for strikes, 30 out of the zone. And he's thrown first pitch strikes now to 13 of the 24 batters that he has faced. Troy Gloss likes that ball middle in. So... They're setting up away. Johnny Oates watching Kenny Rogers closely, although he has worked into the seventh and eighth inning many times this year. And it's because of his efficiency. He's 
usually around 80 pitches right now. And yes, he is. Walk hits it high in the air, deep to left. Did he make a mistake? Yes. He's a big guy. He knows what to do with that. Rogers comes there. Ross, big guy with long arms, gets his arms extended. Chad Curtis is thinking, I'm going to bring this one back. Whoa. Nice effort. But Rogers says, give me another ball. And now Edgar Clemente, and this time Chad Curtis with a beautiful diving catch. So the Angels with solo home runs by Erstad and Gloss, and Gloss's ninth ties Mo Vaughn for the team lead. But the sinking liner, toughest play for an outfielder to make, and Chad Curtis surrounds it nicely. And does that worry Johnny Oates? The last two batters have hit Kenny Rogers hard, a solo home run by Gloss, and now a line smashed by Clemente. Well, it's the game of momentum, Steve. And Players will feed up that little curveball down low, almost got it in the big toe. But just like all sports, baseball is momentum. You see a home run, you lead off the game, and the next pitch, that Dark Clemente hit one right on the nose. He's out. Curveball fouled off. Count goes to one ball and one strike. Lost ties it up with his ninth home run this year, the former All-American at UCLA. Played on the Olympic team. One of their power hitters. Lost is saying, I, I didn't get all that one. I was, thought Curtis might have caught. Lena fouls it back. That curveball looks so appetizing for a hitter. It's so slow, it almost looks like a beach ball coming up there, Steve. It's well placed down low. The hitters usually swing and miss it. Snaps a fastball on the inside corner. And it surprised Benji Molina. He'll have a couple of words with home plate umpire Jerry Mills, but then walks back to the dugout, a strikeout victim. A Saturday FX baseball goes prime time. Gary Sheffield leads the Los Angeles Dodgers into St. Louis to take on Big Mac in the cards. Dodgers Cardinals FX baseball Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. FX marks the game. How about Mark McGuire in his career, Major League Baseball's all-time leader, even more impressive this season. I mean, one home run every six at-bats. This is when you thought he might fall off a little. He's increasing. Benji Gill chases a pitch that may have been low in the strike zone, so he's behind the count, nothing in two. Well, that's that big curveball I was telling you about. Looks so good to the hitter. Wins down low like that. You miss it. Now, Pudge is trying to get Kenny Rogers to throw a certain pitch. Now they're having a little, yeah, believe it. This is what I want. Come inside with it. Way inside, but look where he stands on that rubber. Is there a reason that he stands in the far third base side of the rubber wreck? Yes, there is. Uh, Steve, most pitchers will try to use one side of the rubber or the other, and Rogers, in this case, is going to help him get to that inside spot. He's trying to get Molina to swing at that fastball inside. He'll likely come back with a curve and drop it in front and see if he'll swing it. And he does, just does get the top of it and fouls it down. 2-2 Two -two ball game here in the seventh inning on Troy Gloss's ninth home run this year. There's his speed. You might see this, this thing in the background right here. You might say, what is that? Well, that's to clean the dirt off the spikes of the pitcher. You can see how far over he is on the rubber. Gill takes it inside. Now it's full three and two. Those are three fastballs on the inside part of the plate, Steve, that were identical. They were all in the same position. If he leaves it out over the plate more, it's going to get hit. Rogers has not walked a man. A tapper, Kenny has it. His toss to first base. A looper, but he gets it to David Segui. 
One bad pitch, he threw that man, and Troy Gloss just jumped all over it and knocked it out of the park, tying this game at two. I will find the bomb there. Here's the McDonald's game summary. Texas taking a 2-0 lead, but the Angels have come back on home runs by Erstad and Gloss. Merker left the game in the second with severe migraine headaches and dizziness. You see the solo home runs by Pudge, Erstad, and Gloss. Erstad hit his in the fifth with two outs. Troy Gloss hit his in the seventh to lead things off, and Rodriguez got his in the first with two outs. Chad Curtis will lead things off. He'll be followed by Ivan Rodriguez and Rafael Palmero. There is a strike on the outside corner. Asagawa, since he's been in, Steve, has done a very nice job. He's been effective because he's changing speeds more. Normally, he throws the same, the same speed every time. And you can see Dick Bosman talking to Kenny Rogers in there. He's using his foot finger more. There's one there. It's more effective when you're working ahead. Now, Hasegawa 0-2. He can toy with Curtis and try to throw one out of the zone and try to make him chase. Chad coming over in the trade from the Yankees. He welcomes that. He didn't play as much with New York, and now he's their everyday left fielder. Well, I think you get a couple of uh, rings by winning the World Series, and he was the 11th player to have a game-winning World Series home run. He hit it off Mike Remlinger in Game 3 last year in the 10th inning. 6-5 walk-off piece. What a great memory that is. For a guy who's really a, a baseball lifer. And I say that about Chad because you know Chad pretty well, and you remember how he got married. He married his wife, Candace in his uniform at 1.30 in the afternoon in a minor league game and reported to work for a 2 o'clock game. Now that is desire <laughs> for baseball. Didn't leave much for a honeymoon in the minor leagues. They might have <laughs> went to McDonald's. I'm not sure. But you, called it, low. you called it a walk-off piece. Steve, I got to play a year in Japan in 1993, and the, the Japanese call them sayonara home runs. Mm. Hasegawa, he, he's trying to keep that ball away from Curtis, who does have some power. He's got four home runs this year. A three and two count. He doesn't want to put anybody on because walks usually end up coming back to haunt you. Especially a leadoff walk. Pudge Rodriguez and Paul Merrill to follow. Popped him up. Center field, Garrett Anderson or Benji Gill, and Garrett calls off Benji and Kennedy and makes the catch for the first down. Well, Shigatoshi Hasegawa has certainly done a nice job since coming on, and Al Levine did an equal job. One hit he is allowed, and it looks like the Hasegawa of old, and this is the guy who is a second favorite name to call by the Yankees' longtime broadcaster. Bob Shepard, who is their public address announcer. He said Mickey Mantle is number one, but he loves to say the name Shigatoshi Asagawa. <laughs> well, he, the, the Angels are going to need good middle relief pitching if they're going to contend in this division. Right now they have three players who are starting pitchers on the disabled list. Ken Hill, who could be gone for two to three months or the entire season. Tim Belcher is going through a dead arm stage, and they hope to have Tim back by June. Jason Dixon might pitch on Sunday. That ball flipped towards right field and rather deep. Tim Salmon back near the warning track makes the catch for the second out. Well, Steve, you know, when players are out and they're injured, um, they still can contribute a lot to their team. Kenny Hill, a 10-year, 11-year veteran in the major leagues as a pitcher, he can work the young pitchers, give them some advice, talk to them, you know, after a bad outing, you can say, hey, you know, hang in there, kid, uh, try something here or do this. Uh, so you can really be a good addition to your team. And his last great year was with the Texas Rangers when he led them to their first West title in 1996 and 
and won 16 games the next year before the trade deadline he was traded to the Angels that ball stroked to center field Garrett Anderson Paul Marrow is out and Hasegawa continues to cruise shut out baseball for three for Hasegawa first down Kennedy and Vaughn coming up Bottom of the eighth inning, tied at two, Texas and Anaheim. Our game summary looks like this. First inning, two out, Yvonne Rodriguez. That is home run number 12 for Pud. One nothing was the score. Kent Merker, second inning. Migraine headaches had to leave the ball game. He had migraines and dizziness. Darren Urstead starts the Angel comeback down to nothing. Hits a curveball for his sixth home run this year to cut it to 2-1. Then in the seventh, leadoff hitter, Troy Gloss, number nine this year for the Angels' third baseman. That ties it at two. And that's where we are. Going to the bottom of the eighth inning, and Kenny Rogers stays out there. He has thrown over 90 pitches now in the ball game, and he will face hitters one, two, and three. Darren Erstead, Adam Kennedy, and Mo Vaughn. Just in case the Angels get the lead, Fred Percival is up in their pen. Mike Benefro, Jeff Zimmerman, just in case Kenny Rogers falters here in the eighth. There is Percival. He is the Angels' closer. Bobby Ramos, the Angels' bullpen coach, trying to calm the bull down. But Erstad hit a Kenny Rogers curveball for a home run. Be interesting to see if Rogers throws him curveballs or tries to put fastballs away. Erstad goes up the first pitch and hits it to Luis Alise, and Luis has it right in front of him and throws out Erstad by a step. Watch how Luis Alise keeps his hard smash in front of him. See, he has plenty of time to pick it up and throw the runner out, even though Erstad runs fast. That's what you do when a ball is just really crushed at you. You're just trying to put your body in front of it. Louis Alise, a veteran second baseman, had plenty of time to get him. Now Adam Kennedy. And Kennedy takes strike one. Kennedy, 0 for 3 in the ball game. The two rookies competing for Rookie of the Year in the early months of 2000. Ruben Mateo and Adam Kennedy are 0 for 6 combined. 0 for 3 Mateo, 0 for 3 Kennedy. And there is a ground ball hit foul. Nothing in two. Rogers still throwing strikes and still throwing quality strikes. He is missed, but not by much, to two pretty good hitters, Erstad and Gloss, and they have made him pay for those mistakes. They weren't balls right down the middle either. Erstad's pitch was probably the one closest to the middle of the plate. But Gloss's ball was on the outside half. Kennedy now will become defensive. 0-2 behind in the count. Foul back. And what I mean by defensive, Steve, is he'll just try to fight off the pitch. Any, anything close, he doesn't want to strike out. Well, he has been striking out on some high fastballs this year. But with Rodgers, you always wonder how he's setting you up. Is he setting you up, up and in, to go soft away? This is where you just have to battle. Anything close, you're swinging. Fouls it off left side. The count will remain nothing in two. Late in the game, you're looking for base runners. And when you're behind 0 and 2, you're pretty much going to have to hit your way on. And look at Johnny Oates sitting there saying, Well, I wonder what's going to happen. He's working on his bubble. Kennedy flips it to left field, a base hit. Like you said, Rex, just go after anything that's close he did and it really looks like he stayed inside the baseball well that's just how you hit a curveball beautiful swing and a good piece of hit here's the full sequence fastball curveball fastball in he fought it off curveball down again and then he went with it that's a good piece of hit Steve he adjusted his swing that's just how you approach a curveball you wait till it gets to you and then just go with the curve to the opposite field and Adam Kennedy could steal late in the game this could be a really interesting cat and mouse game here with Pudge Rodriguez it's still Rogers and Pudge so difficult 
A guy with a great move and the best arm in baseball behind home plate in Pudge Rodriguez. Eight gold gloves with that guy. But Rogers can't afford to let Kennedy get in his mind at first base there. He can't take his concentration off of the hitter. Move on for one minute. For the first, for the first time in this game, Texas defending Mo differently. And finally, there are runners on the base pass with Kennedy at first base. In the past, they had three guys dramatically shifted on the right side of the infield, and the third baseman, Mike Lamb, played near the second base bag. Now, it's regular. Kennedy's third in the NL. He's nine for ten. He's only been caught once. Kennedy does not go. And Vaughn takes outside. Two balls, no strikes. Adam Kennedy, the rookie, he's learning how to pick his spots to steal. Whenever you're on base in front of a slugger like Mo Vaughn, you really got to be careful because Mo Vaughn, he could easily hit a two-run home run. Doesn't want to gamble trying to get thrown out. And the slugger's behind you. Kennedy with the lead. Vaughn waves at the off speed. That came in at 70 miles an hour, and Vaughn just could not wait long enough. That was a really nice pitch. Watch this. It just kind of teased Mo. Started up high and went away right where Rodriguez wanted it. 2 0 count normally is a fastball situation, but not in the American League and not with Rodgers pitching. The last two pitches to home plate, Kennedy's move was back to first base, even on the delivery home. Because he's being careful. Rodgers was such a receiving move to first, and Rodriguez, who throws out almost everybody, is going to have to really be careful. Move on, looks for anything out over the plate, whether it's breaking or not. And he knocks it into right field. That's a fair ball. Into the corner. Kennedy racing for third. And Ron Renneke will hold him there. Vaughn into second base with a double. Here's Mo Vaughn getting that. Breaking ball out front. He hooks it down the line. With Jason McDonald playing Mo to pull out there, he was able to get on that ball quickly. And now Dick Bosman is going to come out. They're going to have a little talk with Kenny Rogers. First base open, man on second and third with one out. They're going to talk about how they're going to pitch to Tim Salmon here. Well, in the first inning, Kenny Rogers had the same situation. Only that time, runners were on first and third, but there was still one out. And Rogers got Salmon to pop up on a fastball that came running in. Garrett Anderson, in his last at bat, hit into a double play. Here's the double. Okay, look at where the ball was. It was up and out over the plate, and that's where Mo likes it. You just see he went with it. Pulled it right on the chalk. I said before, it's a game of inches, Steve. That was two inches inside the foul line. Now they have an interesting situation here. First base open, and a left-hander on deck, Garrett Anderson. Do you pitch around Tim Salmon, or do you intentionally walk Tim Salmon to load the bases and make it a double play situation? And it looks like they're going to intentionally walk him. Wow, this takes you back to just memories of the National League Championship Series when the New York Mets and Kenny Rogers faced the Atlanta Braves in the last game of the playoffs. And Kenny Rogers issued two intentional walks before walking Andrew Jones on a full count to force in the winning run in a 10-9 victory, giving Atlanta the National League pennant. Okay, now, you're Garrett Anderson sitting on deck, and you're saying, okay, I'm going to make you pay. That's what your attitude is when you're on deck. Now, Rogers, he'll try to get Anderson to hit the ball on the ground and develop a double play for himself and the team. Anderson's going to try to find a hole out there somewhere or a sacrifice fly to try to bring in Kennedy, who runs well at third base. Last time Garrett Anderson was up, he hit a 3-6-3 double play. Now, with the bases loaded, he has been strong. Almost a 350 hitter with three grand slams. 
You were talking earlier about the back underside. Why is that important? And talk about back underside with Kennedy at third, Vaughn at second, Salmon first. Because you want to get the ball elevated enough to, they need one run here, and you want to sacrifice fly situation. But early in the game, Johnny Oates talked about how Kenny Rogers will get to the situation he wants, and that's against the left-handed batter. Rogers almost hit Anderson on the first pitch, ball one. So what that pitch was was a setup pitch for the next one. He'll likely throw a big loop and curveball here after he showed him the fastball in. Corners are in. Segui at first. Lamb at third. Want to stay in the middle of the field. One ball, one strike. There was the curve, okay? Now the count's even. And he'll either come probably back in with the fastball or another big curve down and out of the zone. He doesn't want to walk him. He's going to bring in the go-ahead run. Anderson, base hit up the middle. In comes Kennedy. They will hold Vaughn at third. And the Angels have their first lead of the night at 3-2. was the fastball, but he left it out over the over the plate. And that's going to be it for him. Here comes Johnny Oates. We'll check the swing out here. He loved that fastball up in the zone, and that's what he got. He stayed in the middle part of the field, Steve. And watch the reaction. That's going to fire the Angels up and their fans as well. Really a marvelous game pitched by Kenny Rogers. He goes seven innings and a third. The three runs belong to him, but the three on base also belong to Kenny. 118 pitches, Steve. That was maybe one pitch too long. Johnny Oates gave him the matchup he wanted, lefty on lefty. But just might have left him in a little too long there, Steve. That's a lot of pitches. But he's done a fine job tonight, and when you get tired late in the game, sometimes you're going to leave a ball up over the plate. So Johnny Oates takes out Kenny Rogers with the bases loaded, and Troy Gloss at the plate. Gloss was the guy who crushed the Texas Rangers last year. Hit almost 350 and hit four home runs, and he hit a, his first against the Rangers back in the seventh inning to tie this game. So Jeff Zimmerman comes on, who was one of the great stories last year, only he has struggled in the year 2000. 0 and 4 with a six earned run average. And here is a guy who won his first nine big league games and then look at has the home lost runs. seven in a row. Steve, look at the home runs there, though. He's been getting hit because the, the hitters in the league are getting to know him now. Ross going for the down, swings and misses. One ball and one strike. Well, that slider there that Gloss just missed, that's his big pitch. Fastball slider. And then he'll throw an occasional changeup. Now, the Angels made a decision. They took Mo Vaughn out of the game, got pinch runner Trent Durrington in. He's at third. Salmon second. First base, Anderson, who broke the 2-2 tie with a single up the middle. Gloss fouls it off. Now he's behind the count one and two. So Gloss is trying to do the same thing. The defense is set up for the double play, but he wants to try to get the back on his side and let the sacrifice fly or a clean base hit. And Zimmerman wants the strikeout. That's his specialty. He has 21 this year, fourth most among American League relievers. Zimmerman, a rookie last year, 27 now. Ross swings and misses at the fastball and strikes out. He just challenged Gloss there. He said, okay, you're going to have to beat me here. And he did. He got away with a fastball right in the middle of the plate. Gloss is upset he missed that. And you can see this is the 94 up here that got him. With the two down low set up that 94 up. Well, the Angels will make a change. Instead of Edgar Clemente, Mike Sosha will go with Orlando Palmero, who has as good an eye as any Angel hitter. He will really make the pitcher work. And the Angels now with two outs. A run is home that broke the 2-2 tie, and Percival is warming up in the bullpen. But the Angels know about Texas and their comeback ability. They were down eight runs on Friday, 
and beat Oakland. They were down five on Saturday and beat Oakland. Kenny Rogers, a little bit of pain in that one shoulder. Johnny Oates doesn't like this matchup, and he's going to come out and go back to his bullpen. It'll be the left-hander, and Mike Benefro was warming up. We'll see if that's who Johnny Oates chooses to call from the pen for Texas when we come back. Every summer evening. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Edison International Field of Anaheim. The Angels with a 3-2 lead over the Texas Rangers in the first of this four-game series between the Angels and the American League West champion Texas Rangers. Mike Benefro comes out of the pen. This is his 16th game this year, and he has been strong of late. He has not allowed a run in his last six games covering four innings. And he is a situational guy in his situation. Get the man at the plate, Orlando Palmero. Well, Benifro, he is a side-winded left-hander, Steve, with fastball and with some sink to it and a slider. A sinking fastball. Now, Orlando Palmero, Steve, he is a very good hitter off the bench. He doesn't have a lot of power, so all he's trying to do is just place the ball somewhere. Durrington is at third base. Salmon at second base. Garrett Anderson, the man who broke the 2-2 tie with a base hit to center field. That scored Adam Kennedy. Is it first? Orlando Palmero with one home run in his major league career. Benefro's first pitch is strike one. And the team that Palmero hit that home run against was the Texas Rangers last year on April 9th against John Burkett. And the home run came on Palmero's 415th career at bat. And he sprays the ball to left field as well as he can pull it. That's out to the plate. Now he's behind the count. Nothing in two. So Palmero here will choke up on the bat about an inch or so to give him better bat control. Johnny Oates, he's good at making pitching moves, and he thought that Kenny Rogers would be able to retire Garrett Anderson, but Rogers with 118 pitches thrown, got a little tired, left one up. Time was called, and Benefro had gotten into his delivery, and my goodness, I don't know how he held onto the baseball, but he did a pirouette that took a page right out of the New York Ballet. Well, look at Paul Merrill's hands. He went time, and he made, a, he made a visual sign. Now, in the heat of the battle with the crowd noise, it's hard for the umpire to hear you say time. So he just wiggled his fingers, and the umpire knew that was time. One ball, two strikes. Benefro is going to try to make Orlando chase out of the strike zone. The Angels and Mike Sosha would love to have an extra insurance run or two. Texas came from a run down in the ninth inning to beat Seattle last night with two in the bottom of the ninth. Slicing one right to the third baseman, Lamb, and they will get the force at second base. That will bring Troy Percival out of the bullpen to try and save this game, but Garrett Anderson came up with the clutch base hit to break the 2-2 tie and give Anaheim a 3-2 lead going to the ninth. Goes into his meditative state as he will try and save his 10th game this year. Troy Percival, Steve, he's becoming a pitcher. He normally has a 95-mile-an-hour fastball, but what I mean by that is he's not just using that. He'll use a curveball and a changeup as well to keep the hitters off balance. He'll have a tough job trying to retire Segui. David Segui, second in the American League in batting. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer for Baseball Thursday is Larry Myers. Tonight's game was produced by Jerry Weinstein and directed by Doug Freeman. And the field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Percival's first pitch is in there, strike one. 92 miles an hour. But you were talking about Percival, and here is what Segui has done against Troy in his career. One home run. That meant it was a big one because Percival pitches in the ninth. 
slice to left field. Erstad runs on. He'll make the catch for the first out of the top of the ninth inning. So Segui, who is battling Darren Erstad for the American League batting race, 0 for 3. Erstad, meantime, went 2 for 4 with a home run. But you were talking about Percival. In his last game, he pitched one inning Monday against the Oakland Athletics. Ninth save of the year in 10 chances. He didn't have control of his fastball. He went with the curve and got the save. He threw more curveballs than I've ever seen him throw. He, he normally is predominant fastball. That's, there is the fastball. There's three of them. He's thrown three pitches, and all of them have been fastballs. So last year, he had a 1.99 earned run average until August. And then he developed some shoulder problems. His ERA rose high in the second half. There's the curveball that misses, but that was what he could not throw last year. He said he could not get on top of the pitch. They shaved off some bone spurs from the top of the right shoulder, and the result has been success this year. There's the curve, popped up. Left side, Anderson or Erstad, it will be the Angels center fielder for the second out. So Ruben Mateo, if the Texas Rangers lose this game, his 14-game hit streak will be over. Rodriguez and Paul Merrow talking. They're the two big guns in that Texas lineup. They're still waiting for Rusty Greer to come back from the disabled list. Gabe Kapler and Frank Catalanato as well. Vaughn, he's been healthy. Ken Hill, for the next two or three months, will be sidelined. Now it is Royce Clayton, who has five home runs this year. Good fastball hitter. He takes high ball one. So really all Clayton's trying to do is get on base. Either a walk or a knock. However he wants to get on. I say knock, that means base hit. But he wants to get on first. Percival has a high leg kick and he's easy to steal off of. He can get into scoring position. Curveball in there. And a beauty one and one. You saw Clayton's back leg buckle. We call that jelly leg. Percy's got a good one, especially after throwing 94 fastball and then comes back with a 76 mile an hour curveball. That'll, that'll really mess you up. He chops it up the middle. Benji Gill right there. His throw on the money and the Angels win 3-2. to two. Garrett Anderson, the player of the game, breaking that 2-2 tie in the eighth inning with a single up the middle and giving the Angels a victory in the first of this four-game series against the American League West champions. Here's the Nissan play of the game. Base is loaded. Kenny Rogers to Garrett Anderson, a smash up the middle, and that brought home Adam Kennedy with the winning run from third. So the Angels push the record back to 18 and 18 this year. The Texas Rangers, meantime, fall to 15 and 19. We'll come back and wrap up the game, tell you about the winner, the loser, and the victory after this. Anaheim wins game one of this four-game series, three to two. Winning pitcher Hasegawa, losing pitcher Kenny Rogers. Percival saves his 10th. Meantime, in Oakland, it is Seattle and Oakland Athletics competing at this time. And the A's with a 7-6 lead. Giambi hit his major league leading 15th home run in the bottom of the eighth. That game is now and the A's leading. Seattle right now with a game and a half lead on both Oakland and Anaheim. Both even with records at 500. But the big hit of the game, Garrett Anderson with the bases loaded, Rex. Yes, on Kenny Rogers' 118th pitch, it was out over the middle of the plate, and Anderson, who does so well in bases loaded situations, comes through for the Angels in big-time fashion. Well, I'm glad to see that you were able to get out of that traffic jam because you saw a pretty good game when you finally got here. Yes, yeah, Steve, I really enjoyed it. I appreciate it. The Angels with a 3-2 victory, and they have a record of 500 this year.
So that's it from Edison International Field of Anaheim. The final score, the Angels 3, the Rangers 2. Be sure to tune in to FX Baseball Saturday night at 8 o'clock Eastern as the St. Louis Cardinals take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Baseball Thursday continues next week here on Fox Sports Net when you'll see either the Cardinals battle the Philadelphia Phillies or the Minnesota Twins face the Oakland Athletics. Please check your local listings. Stay right here. The National Sports Report is next in most areas for all the scores, a look at the NBA playoffs, and everything that's going on in baseball. For Rex Hudler, I'm Steve Fizziak. Once again, the final score, 3-2 to two Anaheim.